Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we have another episode of Quick Sips. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at this brand new six-year malted rye whiskey coming to us from New Riff. Now, before we get started here, I should just quickly mention that I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to New Riff or the products that they're putting out. I own two of their bottles, both of which are single barrel bourbons. One's a shelfer, one is a store pick. I've had a few sips of each. I've put them side by side, compared them head to head, you know, checked out the differences between those different barrels. Uh, but by and large, I haven't had any of their rye whiskeys, their experimental malted grain expressions, their peated stuff or anything like that. So I'm approaching this review with a clean slate, with zero preconceptions, and I'm just excited to give this thing a go. Now, let me give you sort of the rundown of this whiskey here. This, again, carries a six-year age statement, which differs from the traditional four-year age statement that we see on a lot of New Riff's products. New Riff opened in 2014, and because they're such a recently opened distillery, most of their stuff is still pretty darn young. And so, again, four years has been the, the typical age statement that we see on their bottled and bond bourbons and rise, their single barrel bourbons and rise, and all of those other expressions that I mentioned. Um, so to see a six-year come out is significant, and it's very exciting to sort of watch this distillery's progress in real time. Now, this thing is also bottled in bond, coming in at 100 proof, it's non-chill filtered, and it is made of 100% malted rye. So that's all we've got here. We're going to get into the tasting now, um, try to keep this as short as possible. Last thing that I'll say is thank you to Mitchell G from right here in Columbus, Ohio for lending me this bottle. Uh, he also lent me the Bardstown Discovery Series number five to review. So thank you, Mitchell, for your generosity and for sharing your whiskey with me. Let's go ahead and check this thing out on the nose and see what we get. Okay, so the first thing that I get uh, right away is just a, a really nice sweetness here. You get a, a ton of vanilla, a ton of like confectioner's sugar or a, a powdered sugar. You get some really nice honey notes. It seems light. It seems delicate, a little bit floral, but I'm not getting a big punch of rye spice like you might expect from something that's made of 100% rye. Now, I know it's malted rye. That's a totally different thing. I've had a couple of really disgusting malted ryes, to be honest with you. This is not anything like those. This is very sweet and much more bourbon-like than I was expecting. Yeah, the spice is really in the background here. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of like like white pepper. It's it's not that fresh cracked black pepper like you get on a lot of different ryes. It's again, lighter. It's more delicate than that. I get a little bit of raisin notes here, a little bit of candied grape, almost reminding me of like a Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 1 product. I'm getting some of those types of notes. It also reminds me a little bit of like some like MGP bourbons, I guess. So it's this sort of interesting mixture. It's very nice some people might consider it to be a little bit flat on the nose because it's not jumping out of the glass. It's kind of tame, kind of reserved. I think it's just pleasant and delicate, um, but I could see you know someone kind of going either way on this one. I'm gonna nose it one more time, see if there's anything left in here before we go to the palate. As I get into the nose just a little bit more, there's a slight toasty note to this. Uh, you get a little bit of barrel char, which is nice. But yeah, overall, it's a vanilla bomb some of those candied grape raisin notes, lots of honey, very sweet, very delicate. Let's check this thing out on the palate. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. First thing you get here is sort of a punch of, again, that sort of white pepper spice up front. It hits you at the same time with all of that vanilla and all of that sweetness. Um, that punch is really, yeah, from the front of the palate, that pepper punch is what's really kind of carrying this thing all the way through. But I'm not getting anything really herbal or any sort of licorice notes from the rye. It's it's a very balanced rye. It's a very sweet rye, mingling nicely with all of these lighter flavors going on in here. It's, in general, just a lighter whiskey. Um, not particularly oaky by any means. Not a lot of leather or anything like that going on. Yeah, very light, pleasant, delicate, drinkable, but with enough sort of <laughs> teeth or gusto. I don't know what word I want to use. Enough of that to kind of keep it interesting and for it to not really fall flat. So let's go in for another sip and see how this thing continues to develop here. Mm. 
Yeah, there's a slight funk in here. I'm assuming it's from that malted rye. I mean, it would have to be. That's what this is literally made out of. Um, there's this sort of funk. It verges on being slightly rubbery, almost like a sherry funk, but it's not off-putting by any means. Again, it's another thing in here with that sort of unique spice component that helps differentiate it, helps keep it interesting, and adds just a slightly different dimension to those lighter and sweeter notes. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's really pleasant. It's really drinkable. And as we get into the finish here, the sweetness lingers on the palate, a little bit of that funk. Still not getting a lot of oak or woodiness here. None of the barrel char that I got on the nose is kind of coming through to the finish. It's sweet, a little bit of pepper hangs on, an appropriate length finish for 100 proof. I don't know, this is, this is a, a really great whiskey. Highly recommend at the MSRP, which I believe is around $60 or so. I wouldn't pay anything over that. Honestly, if you had this thing in a blind tasting, it, it probably wouldn't do so well because it's a little bit uneventful. But if you are just using this as sort of an everyday sipper, uh, it would be a great option for that. I feel like, again, it compares to this Buffalo Trace Mashbill 1 profile, along with a slight hint of an MGP feel in there as well. And because of that, because it's only six years old, it's almost like an uneventful version of those things, right? It's great for New Riff. It's great to see this progress. I can't wait to see where it continues to go from here. But this is not like a knock your socks off kind of whiskey. I don't know if it's meant to be or not. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't freak out over this. I wouldn't go, you know, hunting and paying over a hundred bucks. I don't know if there's a secondary market for this bottle yet or not. But I would avoid all of that <laughs> if that becomes the case. I would let this sit at 60 bucks. I would have one on hand as a really great sipper. I'd love to see if they end up doing single barrel versions of this at a higher proof. That could be really, really interesting. But as it stands now, this is just a really, really great general drinkable rye that honestly drinks a little bit closer to a barely legal rye or even a bourbon in a lot of ways. Let's do one final sip and then we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, I think that's it. I really think that's all I've got to say. For me, because this is a little bit lower proof than I would like to see it, because it's delicate in its flavors, I would recommend you know holding it in your palate for a little bit longer when you take your sips, rinsing it around a little bit more. That way, every sip uh, can kind of grip you a little bit more. It can be a little bit more flavorful instead of just kind of pounding this thing and, and you know throwing it back or whatever. That will... Uh, probably make you feel like it's a little bit, again, more uneventful than it is. At this point, I'm just repeating myself, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Highly recommend at $60 around MSRP. Thank you again, Mitchell, for lending me this bottle. Um, and again, if you can find it, pick it up. Let me know what you think. I'd be curious to hear all of your thoughts on this, your overall impressions of New Riff. I know I like the single barrels that I have in terms of the bourbons, uh, but I haven't had anything else. So if you have any opinions on New Riff or any inside info, drop that in the comments below. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button, turn on that bell notification. Click all notifications to find out when I'm going live, which is at least once a week and when I'm dropping new content. If you want to help support the channel and get access to um, sort of the Drums and Drams community uh, to some behind the scenes content, you can check out the Patreon. That link is in the description below. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to get out of here. I finished my glass. I like this stuff a lot. So we're gonna we're gonna get out of here without a final sip. I'll see you next time. Cheers from Drums and Drams.